Hey, beautiful souls, it's your Brita Zen with this week's Moon Day Monday, where we talk about all the different signs that the moon flows through this week. Of course, the moon goes through all the signs every 28, 29 days. Because we're water beings, we're made of a lot of water, we're influenced, of course, our emotions are influenced by the moon. So knowing what to expect as far as the different uh, going into fire or water or air or earth, whatever energies we're dealing with, allows us to prepare. So it's like a forecast for weather, right? You want to know what you're going to be experiencing so you can prepare for it. Every moment is about energy, and we are either at higher vibrational energy or lower vibrational energy, uh, unconditional love or fear of losing conditional love. So understanding those energies allows us to not feel so out of control with where our vibration is at, and we can take more of our own self-control over what we're feeling. So this week we do have an Aries full moon, so we'll go into there to talk about how to unveil and let go of things, use the most of that energy as well, in addition to all of the regular moon energies. So I'm excited to see what we'll find out in this session. So let's get started. As we talked about in last week's Moon Day Monday video, of course, we start off on Aquarius Moon Energy uh, Sunday evening. And of course, we carry into that energy all the way up until Tuesday when we go into Pisces. So, of course, Monday is going to be full of that Moon Rebel energy where we are just looking to break out of a rut. We want to try things differently, try th new things. We want to make sure uh, that everyone sees us for the unique individuals that we are. It's ruled by the planet Uranus, and so personal freedom and our individuality are more important than anything on Monday into Tuesday. So our schedules could be topsy and turvy and our causes could become urgent on our beautiful Monday starting off the week. So watch for a tendency to become fanatical about things or over passionate about things. Um, don't act necessarily deliberately rebellious without a reason or break tradition just for the sake of breaking it. That's all the energy that we have like on Monday. And then we, of course, we roll into Pisces moon on Tuesday. So at 8, 18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, we go into the beautiful Pisces moon. My moon is in Pisces, so I love this time. Uh, but, you know, it can impact all of us a little differently, depending if you're not uh, used to having a watery moon, you can feel very emotional. Because this moon slips into the sign of sleeping and meditation, prayer, even drugs or alcohol, if we crave those to induce like a trance-like state and uh, escape the harshness of reality. So this is the time we can be most susceptible to what we feel are emotional assaults on us of any kind. And we can be feeling dreamy, nostalgic, wistful, impressionable, uh, you know, feeling all that deep, deep emotion. But we can be over emotional as well. It's when we're at our most spiritual, which is great. Our boundaries are at their lowest. And it's when we're the most compassionate, intuitive, sensitive to those who are less fortunate. So it's a time to attend a spiritual group or a religious gathering, anything to do with our spiritual pursuits. It's good, like the, um, you know, uh, high priestess card in the major account of the tarot. It's good to step away and connect higher, uh, look behind the scenes, dive deep into our own self-reflection as well. We'll be in that Pisces energy until Thursday when we move into the Aries moon. Pisces is the end of the zodiac. We start with the Aries baby, which is the beginning of the zodiac, and we move into that. So September 28th at 8.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
course, fire moon. So it is all about boldness, impulsiveness, and has a lot of energy involved with it. We might have just an extra boost of wanting to move forward, get things done, maybe even feel a little feisty and a little argumentative as well. So it's when even the meekest of us aren't afraid to take a stand to protect our personal feelings. That's why there could be a lot of um, intensity around this moon. Uh, as I mentioned, it is the first sign of the zodiac, so it's a natural starting point for all kinds of projects and a wonderful time to channel this me first type of energy to, to initiate change for ourselves and new beginnings in the outside world. So just watch out for a tendency to be too impulsive and too stress oriented. And then on Friday, the day after, uh, we go into the Aries moon, we go into and have an Aries full moon at 5.58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the morning. So we've probably been feeling that energy from the beginning of the week, and so that's why I try to put these out on the Mondays um, and try to give advance warning as we can, because some of us are even impacted more soon from the moon. So if you're interested in getting even advanced warning of these, if you become a member of my YouTube channel, uh, if you're at the praying mantis level, which is $7.99 a month, you do get advanced access a week before on my moon day Mondays, my take 10 with Zen Tuesdays, my what's up on Wednesday pick a cards. Uh, you also have access to my uh, Thursday night Q&A and readings where we have two hours where we just chat about spirit, about my life, um, and we do past life readings, all sorts of fun stuff. And after each of my free readings that I do live on YouTube on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, um, you also have access to the Praying Mantis only readings after that. So just a little plug for memberships because I want to make sure you're aware that you can be even more informed and have more interaction if you wish. But for this Aries full moon, one of the great things that we can experience with a full moon besides expansive emotional energies and whatever we're focusing on is um, multiplied. We can also use this energy for what I call like an unveiling and letting go ceremony. It's like asking the universe to unveil certain things in our life that are standing between us and our path and anything that we can be aware of. We can use this energy to more smoothly. It's like oiling something to move it out of the way. Uh, and it allows us to do that. Now, we can always do that. We have like 10, uh, you know, specific things we can ask of the moon, each of the full moons. Of course, we also talk about new moon wishes on new moons. So um, you can check those out when those come around. But for the full moons, it's about releasing. And if you do it some sort of ceremony, the most powerful time for it is eight hours before the super, or that's the super, but the full moon hits. So uh, you definitely, um, you know, can take advantage of that energy. But if you do it afterwards, or even before, if you're like, I'm doing it before I go to bed, I'm not waking up in the early in the morning. Understandable. <laughs> so you can uh, do it before or after, um, but it's most powerful within eight hours of the full moon. Also, if we zero in and use the energy of whatever sign uh, the full moon is in, it's even more powerful if we make our release around those objects. So, uh, you know, we just kind of covered a little bit when we talked about the Aries moon coming in, but here is a little screenshot, it goes a little more detail about the uh, Aries energy. So if we look at things, you know, like we talked about, it's the first sign of the Zodiac, it's the baby. So it's about transformation of birth and childhood, anything that we have with charged emotions regarding those things, any memories. So if there's anything we can release, we need to release perfect time. We have a lot of childhood stuff rolling around there under our subconscious. So this is a perfect time for that release. 
and then embracing our physical human bodies and self-image and identity. So anything that we're battling with about our inner self-worth or anything that makes us feel unstable, you know, this outer retail price of others' value of us, um, this is a great time to release those uh, blocks, those things that are standing in between us and moving forward. And it's about independence and inner freedom. That Aries baby, it's like terrible twos, right? I want to be free. So if we feel out of control or the need to control, or if we feel like others are trying to control us, these are good times uh, to release things around that subject. Also abandonment and feeling left alone. I'm sure we all have had those in our lives. Uh, new sparks to new or an upgraded path. So again, anything standing in the way of our upgrades of heading forward in our path. It says, are we ready for a significant change? If not, what's standing in our way? What fear is there? What can we re re release? Where are we investing our energies? Do we want to reroute them? We want to release our energy around something? Uh, do we feel energy blocks are impeding our movement? If you haven't checked out my Take 10 with Zen, episodes four and five, they talk about fate and things we can do to release blocks and to stop investing energy in those areas too. And that uh, playlist will be at the end of the video and it should be listed in the description box of this video too. And then how are you relating to timing and time itself? Ooh, patience. Ah, oh, I'm sure we could all use release of things standing between me and getting the things that I want in the time that I want it or letting go of my connection and my attachment to timing, right? Are you in the world of drama? Is there a victim? Is there a villain or a hero? Oh my, well, then we are in a drama. We're in the fear world if we're experiencing any of those three. So how can we come out of that storm? What's standing in between? And then if you have anything going on with your head, your eyes, your ears, and your brain, uh, the Aries energy rules over those things. So perfect opportunities to use this for releasing things and clearing our path. And I try to, when I um, like formulate the wording around any of these things, like let's say, um, that's something on my eyes. Let's just say my eyes. Um, I try to do it like, thank you for unveiling and helping me let go of the blocks that stand between me and perfect, healthy eyesight. So if there's something like that, then that's one and make them very specific, you know, each of the 10. But when we approach it with the gratitude, that just also adds an extra zing to um, all of it as well. Also experiencing in our heart what it would feel like after the release and picture what that would look like in our minds helps bring it into this world. It helps it come to fruition as well. And even voicing these out loud as we do the wishes puts that vibration from our throat in our throat chakra out into the world too. So hopefully all of that will help uh, make the best use of this full moon in Aries. And then on Saturday, we move into the Taurus moon, Earth moon, and uh, that is at 9.18 p.m. Eastern time in the evening. And so a little more grounded type of energy versus after coming out of this fiery moon. So it'll help uh, simmer things down a little bit. But, you know, the moon in Taurus, she's the lady at her most solid and sensual, feeling secure and well-rooted. So uh, less stress, there's no need to stress, there's no need to hurry. We definitely don't need to change anything when we're feeling this Taurus energy. Um, and we are a little bit resistant when this moon is uh, in Taurus, especially if it's not a change that we are wanting to make. We'd rather sit still, have a wonderful dinner, listen to good music. Uh, we appreciate the beauty of the earth, watching a sunset, viewing some lovely art or taking care of money and other resources. These are all good things, activities uh, for the Taurus moon. 
And woohoo, Mercury is finally out of its retrograde shadow.、Uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos where I talk about retrogrades, you know, the, it's retrograde for a certain amount of time, as you can see in the forecast.、Um, the next pre shadow we have, which is when we start to slow, when Mercury starts to slow down and starts to head into retrograde, that's going to be November 25th, right around Thanksgiving. Yay! Great, perfect time for. Some、uh, challenging communication, right? <laughs> I wonder if there's always a retrograde around Thanksgiving. That's why it's known for family fights <laughs> and relatives fighting、uh, at the Thanksgiving table in the United States. <laughs> But you can see we go the pre shadow beforehand, a couple weeks before, where we start to feel the effects of the Mercury retrograde. Then it goes full retrograde. And then after it goes direct, we're still in its shadow. For a couple weeks, where until it like、uh, totally catches up in degree where it's not impacting us whatsoever. The more we get、uh, further away from the, the actual retrograde period, the easier it becomes. So, after January 1st of 2024, in that forecast example, that、um, allows us to. Um, you know, feel less and less. So, yay, happy new year, right? <laughs> But、um, it is a perfect time now that we're completely out of the shadow. We're not impacted by Mercury. Mercury is going direct, which with this Aries moon energy, right in perfect timing. We can take all of this grounded with this、um, moon in Taurus, but still feeling that full moon energy of Aries. Launch new things, move forward, take action. Communication is more clear. So take full advantage of it right now. Mercury does go retrograde three to four times per year. So it's not as scary when we realize, oh, Oh, we're going through this quite a bit. Like, yeah, a lot of the year we're in retrograde and Mercury. And it's like, well, okay. If we learn to use it,、uh, as I mentioned in the last、um, uh, videos when we were going retrograde, I talk about how we can use the most of that energy too. Retrogrades are not curses, they're not bad. It's just, it's like、um, tide coming in. You know, it's. It's not bad, it just is. You know, energy flows, it's in cycles, it comes and it goes. The inter- planetary energy it flows and comes and goes in cycles too. So, when things are like when we're going into retrograde in different areas of our planets, it's like that's not the time to launch something new in relation to that area of our life because it's going to. Capsize and tip over, trying to you know, row out in a little rowboat while the tide's coming in.、Um, and、uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of energy to get very little, if any, result. And it will be very short term results normally, especially with Mercury、uh, retrograde launching things. So being aware of it、um, is good. And that's why I'm giving you a forecast of when the next one is coming. Um, like I mentioned, the next pre shadow is going to be November 25th of, ni- of 2023. I'm going to say 1923. I'm going back in time.、Uh, retrograde is fully December 13th through January 1st. And then it'll be in its post shadow from January 2nd all the way to January 21st. So you've been forewarned. And、uh, it's an exciting time, though. So take all that energy and move on forward. Well, that's it for this week. I do put out social media posts, reminders of each time it changes to the new moon and any of the other、uh, significant planetary changes. So if you don't follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or look at the community tab,、uh, be sure to check that out because I do update those、uh, as the energies change. And hey, if you want to share how you use that full moon energy, Uh, comment down below, or if you don't feel comfortable putting it in public, go ahead and send that to me at my email at bredazen at gmail.com. I love to hear everyone's stories and ideas. All right, everybody, as you're going through this amazing week, please know that every second of every day of your life, that you, yes, you, are unconditionally loved by the mother and the father of all things, our creator. And of course, I love you guys too. So until I see you again, much love to you. You hang in there and you take care.